God bless you. So let me lower the music and we are going to go into the word. The word today is like God is about to do something. I have been praying. You know, let me just get this music down because I just want to download onto you everything that is in my spirit. Amen. By the way, for all the women, you see, I'm still doing my makeup free because I'm trying to encourage women to embrace their natural beauty. So for the last three months, I've been going makeup free. I go to church makeup free. I go everywhere makeup free. And I dare to come online every time for the last month. I've been coming here makeup free. Because you know, women, you are beautiful. You are wonderful just the way you are. The Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and the men who are watching me you are wonderful too you are great just like that a happy new year and i bless your new beginning i bless your rising up i bless your standing i bless everything that you do and i know god is going to take us into places for this year amen so why i have been just praying since um before the new year i've been very busy those of you who follow me online you saw that i was coming on encouraging us and giving the word i gave word for the lonely word for the single word for those who are feeling discouraged and now as we begin the 2015 god began to show me and the word god gave me for this year is a new beginning he makes all things new. Somebody just pre, just hashtag new beginning. New beginning. God makes all things new. This is already a word for somebody. So why I have been praying and um, you know we are just waiting upon the Lord. God began to show me divinely. Amen. I began to see dreams. The first thing that I saw was some were some people in my dreams that I've cut off from. And God began to show me that there was a restoration coming because the relationships were, were, were kind of strained because of some things. And, you know, God is about to restore. So I thought it was alone for me. I thought, okay, these people that I disconnected from, why am I seeing them in my dream? And I began to see them in my dream. And in my dream, we were going around the world doing mission for God. Amen. And as a leader, and you know, as a prophetic voice also, God doesn't only show me things for me. When God is showing things, he is using things that he's showing for, to me, for the world, for the body of Christ, for those who are close to me. He is telling me this is what is about to happen in the body of Christ. We are in a season, not only for new beginning, but also a season and a time of restoration. Somebody just help me prophesy. Restoration is on the way. I don't know what has happened with your relationships. I don't know whether it is a marriage. Some people are married and the enemy just came in and tore apart the marriage. Some men went off with other women. Some women went off with other men. Things have happened in families. But I see God bringing divine restoration in key relationships. Hallelujah. If you are online and you are hearing me, the relationship that you fell in your heart, you fell in your spirit that it was of God, but then all of a sudden things just begin to fall apart. I am here to tell you by the voice of the Lord, by a prophetic voice that restoration is on the way god is about to build back bridges the enemy came in and he began to destroy bridges bridges that connected the people of god and people went their separate ways but in 2018 i prophesy i proclaim i decree by the voice of god by the revelation of god in the name of jesus that your relationships that were destroyed by the enemy they are coming back together. They are being healed. God say, I send my word and I heal your disease. This word is coming to you right now because there is a place of healing 
that needs to be healed in your relationship. And this word is coming. Jesus says to the disciples, the word that I speak to you, they are life. They are spirit and they are life. So if you can capture what God is speaking through me, I am speaking spirit and life. What am I saying? I'm saying I am decreeing in the name of Jesus, healing upon your relationships, healing upon your divine alignments, healing upon your godly connection, I am proclaiming healing between the relationship of husbands and wife. I am proclaiming restoration upon uh, um, children and their parents. Some of you, you lost your children along the way. They took off. You don't know where your child is. You don't know what is happening with your child. But I see your child coming back because God is going to begin to release his angels and the angels of the Lord. God is sending out sickness and he's commanding the nations to bring bring back your children, to bring back your sons and your daughters. Some of you lost church members. They were key members of your church that God brought them to be trained by you, to be to be taught by you, but the enemy came in and wrecked the relationship. Is somebody out there being blessed today? The enemy came in and wrecked the relationship and you lost church members. Those people who were supposed to be there to help you in your ministry after you have trained them after you have educated them after you have sown into their life the enemy just came and took those members from you but i say restoration coming some of you pastors hear the word of the lord your members are going to begin to call you they want to come back home the prodigal sons are coming back home why because god is healing relationships god is healing god is healing I proclaim relationships, healing, and restoration in the name of Jesus. Is somebody out there receiving this? Is somebody out there receiving this? Your sons and daughters are coming home. You haven't heard for your son like forever. You haven't heard for your daughter forever. But I proclaim God is commanding the nations to bring your sons and daughters home in the name of Jesus. Some of you, your husband just left you. He abandoned you. But God is visiting that man. God is visiting that man. That man, the spirit of God is going to begin to touch the heart of your husband. Yes, Joel 2, 25. God will restore unto you the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar and the locust has eaten up. God is bringing restoration. Restoration in the areas of relationship. Your husband is coming back home. You better receive it. You better receive it. We pray for Jeffrey and we pray for Jonathan. You better receive it. Your husband left you for reasons unknown to you. But I see him coming back home. You better receive it. Your husband is coming back home. Some of you were dating somebody and the person just out of no reason, they abandoned you. It was divinely ordained by God. But Satan came in and brought a bridge. But I see God bringing back that bridge together. I see God building back together. Those who have deserted you, they are going to begin to call you. They are going to begin to reconnect with you. But the word of God for you is, you have to be able to forgive. Somebody hashtag forgive. Somebody hashtag forgive. God is bringing people back into your life. But it is necessary that you come to a place where you open your heart up. This word is coming to you. It is not coincidence. It's coming to you to prepare you. This word is coming to you to announce to you, to prepare you, to prepare your heart, to prepare your mind. Because you have prayed, you have fasted, you have decreed and declared that I come to announce to you, this is a season where God begins to revisit your matter. Forgive. Are you hearing me? Forgive your wife. Forgive your husband. Some of them are yes, your ex-husband. But they will contact you again. It is being divinely done by God. You will say, but they have gone away for many years. 
They even run away with a different person. And you feel so nasty when you think about it. But God is bringing cleansing. God is bringing restoration. God will heal. God will heal. God will heal. Hear the word of the Lord. God is going to heal. Even right, right now, you are watching me. You are watching me. By this word, God is healing your heart. Your heart is being healed. Your soul is being restored. God is taking away the hard places of your heart. And he's giving you a tender heart towards that child. Towards that man, towards that woman, towards that church member, towards that prodigal son, towards that, that lady who left your church. There are some key leaders in your church that the enemies, the enemies snatch away, but they're coming back. They are coming back. You better believe it. They are coming back in the mighty name of Jesus. God is bringing them back. God is restoring. Some of you people, especially women, you prayed for so long for restoration. And you thought that God has forgotten you. And you thought that it will never happen. But I am telling you in 2017 and 18, sorry, there will be some pleasant surprises. According to Psalms 126, I keep proclaiming this scripture. The last three months, it says when the Lord shall turn again, the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. It's going to be like a dream. It's going to be like a shock. It's going to be a surprise. And the Bible says, our mouths were full with laughter. Our tongues were singing. Some of you are going to begin to sing songs and laughter. Because God is going to take away your shame. The shame of your youth is going to be removed. Hallelujah. Somebody just hashtag restoration. Restoration is on the way. Restoration is on the way. Hashtag restoration. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes the enemy will come in the beginning of a thing and begin to bring confusion and begin to bring destruction. But God knows what he is doing because the Bible says, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Even the separation is working for your good. The separation that came to destroy you, the enemy thought it was going to destroy you. I am here to tell you it is working out for, for your good. Is somebody with me? Hallelujah. But number one, what did I say? You have to forgive. Prepare your mind. Prepare your heart. Prepare your spirit to forgive. Before your ex calls you. Before they begin to call you the people. Begin to think in your mind. And allow, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you to the people's name. That you need to begin to forgive now. Begin to forgive now. Don't wait for your ex to call you. But begin to pray for him now. This is prophetic direction and instruction. Call your husband's name and begin to pray for him now. Call your child's name. Begin to pray, pray for your child now. Call that person's name. The members who left your church. The ones you know in your spirit that something came in and took them away. Begin to pray for them now. Begin to decree the restoration. Open the door. Open the door. Decree the door open. Decree that you open the door. Some of you have shut the door. But today I come to encourage you to open the door. Decree today I open the door for my restoration to start. Let the restoration with your husband start today. With your child, your friends, whoever they are. Say, oh God, I open the door for restoration.
restoration to take place. Somebody decree, Almighty God, I open the door for restoration to take place because you must give God access. God must have his way. God wants to restore. But are you, are you ready to forgive? Are you ready to receive them back? Are you ready to open your heart? Are you ready to open your arms? Because God will do it. But what will you do? Are you going to yield to the leading of the spirit? Or are you going to hold on to offense? Number one, you must give up offense and forgive. Give up offense and forgive. Give away any spirit of offense and you must forgive. Please help me to share this. Help me to invite somebody. Help me to share in groups. Amen. You must forgive and take away offense and open your heart. Let your heart become softened again. The Bible says, forget the things of the old. Isaiah 43. It says, forget the things, the former things. Behold, I do something new. Oh my God. Behold, I do something new. Forget the things of the past. God says, Behold, I do something new. Can somebody just hashtag for me? Isaiah 43 from verse from verse um, um 19. God said, I'm doing something new. I'm doing something new. Do something new. In my life, something new, do something new in my life, do something new, oh God. May God, this night, as you watch this program and you receive the word, may God begin to do something new. Something new is coming your way. I proclaim the new, something new is coming your way. You must allow the things of the past. The arguments, let them remain in the past. When the man comes back, when the woman comes back, don't go and begin to drag all the old things. Don't go and begin to rehearse all the old pain. Is somebody hearing me? Don't rehearse the old things. But allow God to breathe a new wind. I release the wind of the God of Israel. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. And the dry bones come to life. Let the wind blow. Blow on our divine relationships. Let the wind of God blow. Blow and restore our divine relationships. Let the wind of God blow. Blow and restore. Revive. Revive, oh God. Revive, oh God. Our divine relationships that the enemy came and destroyed. Let the wind of God blow. Zakaba Yahaya. Zekobo Yakataya. Mentorobo Kosherebo. Mantaribe Kasharaba. Menteraba Kashaya. Menteraba Kasaya. Let the wind of God blow. And revive. Somebody decree the wind of God. Let the wind blow. We proclaim the wind of God. The four winds of God. According to Isaiah, Isaiah 37. Ezekiel 37. The dry bones will live again. Can these dry bones leave? We say yes. We say yes, Lord. Ho Rabashaya. Ho Balabaka Sunday. We bless your name, God. We bless your name. The relationships that Satan came and he destroyed. God is bringing them back. God is bringing them. God is bringing them. You must believe. 
you must believe that God is restoring your relationship. Wherever you are right now, wherever you are, I ask you right now, begin to pray. Call the names of the people you feel in your spirit. God should restore. Right now, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Call the name of your children. Oh, Sharaba. Don't mind my voice. We have been interceding for days. So my voice is a kind of horse. But it still has the power of God to proclaim the word of God. Shatarabaya. Come and pray. We proclaim the fresh wind of God. The fresh wind of God. Over divine relationships. Divine alignments. Any relationship we had that Satan came and destroyed. We say, oh God, in the name of Jesus, let your wind blow and there be a restoration. Restoration. Restoration of divine connections. Let the breaches come back together. Let me tell you something. When the enemy wants to destroy your relationship in the spirit, he breaks the bridge. He breaks the bridge. But God is able to bring back the breaches together. The breaches are reconnecting. They are reconnecting. Pray for yourself. Let me show you something. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God will send his angel to pluck your husband from the hand of the wrong woman. Any woman holding your husband, let God arise. Shakarabashaya. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Bring back your husband. Bring back your child. Bring back our members. Bring back anything that belongs to us. We proclaim restoration. Let me give you a scripture. Because God is able. God is able. Let me give you a scripture. Go with me, if you have your Bible, to Philemon chapter 1. Philemon, the book of Philemon, chapter 1. I will read something for you. Amen. Okay. This is it. It says... Let me see. Forgive my voice, but I'm going to read it. Amen. Forgive my voice, but I'm going to. I'm going to share the word of God. No matter what. It says, Philemon chapter 1, verse 8. It says, that is why I am boldly asking a favor of you. This is Paul speaking to Philemon. Amen. <clears throat> this is Paul speaking to Philemon. He says, that is why I am boldly asking a favor of you. I could demand it in the name of Christ Jesus because it is the right thing for you to do. But because of our love, I prefer simply to ask you, consider this as a request from me, Paul an old man and now a prisoner for the sake of Christ Jesus. Philemon chapter 1 verse 10, he says, I appeal to you to show kindness to my child, Onesimus. I became his father in the faith while I was here in prison. Onesimus hasn't been of much use to you in the past. Did you hear that? He has not been of much use to you in the past. 
He has not been of much use to you in the past. But now he is very useful to both of us. I am sending him back to you. Somebody say God is sending him back to me. I am telling you restoration is coming. I am sending him back to you and with him comes my own heart. I wanted to keep him here with me while I am in this chains for preaching the gospel, the good news. And he would have helped me on your behalf, but I didn't want to do anything without your account i wanted to help because you were willing not because you were forced it seems onesimus ran away for a little while it seems that he ran away for a little while so that you can have him back forever he ran away for a little while so that you can have him back forever. Is somebody getting the word of God? So that you can have him back forever. Verse 16. He is no longer like a slave to you. He is more than a, a, a slave. For he is a beloved brother. Especially to me. Now he will, he will mean much more to you. Now he will mean much more to you both both as man and as a brother in the lord this is restoration amen <laughs> i received the healing for my voice amen this is restoration this is apostle paul amen this is apostle paul speaking in the book of philemon chapter 1 from verse 8 to 16 he is speaking to Philemon. He is telling Philemon, I am sending Oanissimus back to you. In the past, he was not profitable to you. In the past, he acted bad. In the past, he was immature. In the past, he went away. He deserted you. Is somebody with me? But he said, now, I am sending him back to you. And now in this new season, he is going to be useful to both of us. He is going to be more profitable to you than he was in the past. Oh God, I wish my voice was in horse to really preach this. He said in the past, this person wasn't good to you. In the past, he left you. But I am recommending him back to you. I am requesting that you take him back. I am saying, open the door and take him back. Because now, he is a better person. Hey! He is. Juanissimus was not a better person. But God is saying, in this new season, in this new time, I am sending him back to you. He is coming back to you. And in this time of coming back, he is a better person. A better person is coming back. He's a changed man. He's a transformed man. He is no longer a slave. When he left you, he was a nobody. He was a slave. But he is no longer a slave. He is now a profitable person. He is now in this new season. The one who used to be a slave. The one who used to be nobody. The one who used to be a runaway. The one who used to cheat on you. God has fixed them. God has restored them. God has transformed them. And God is sending them back to you. He's sending them back to you. In that time of runaway, God was working on them. In their time of being away from you, you thought God was not hearing your prayers. You thought God was not doing anything. But in their process of going away from you, are you hearing me? 
Don't be distracted by the hoarseness of my voice. Listen to the word of God and the spirit of God. Are you hearing me? God is saying, the one who left before is coming back. I am sending him back to you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He said now, he's not only going to be profitable to you alone, Philemon. But this person who was not profitable to anybody is now going to be profitable to both of us. This is what we call double for your trouble. Double for your trouble. The one who was a nobody has become the one with a double portion anointing. Double portion anointing. He's coming back. She is coming back. A better person. I proclaim it. The word of God. Say I am sending him back to you. Can somebody write it for me? Philemon chapter 1 verse 8 to 16. Paul is telling Philemon. He said I am recommending this person who was a nobody before. You couldn't move with them. You couldn't see anything in them. But now they are coming back. And I plead with you. Take them back. Take them back. Receive them back. This is the word of the Lord. Take him back. Take the woman back. Take the child back. Take the church member back. They are going to be profitable all to you. They are coming back. They are coming back in Jesus name. Are you listening to the word of God? You have to meditate on Philemon. Paul said in verse 10, I appeal to you to show kindness. When they come back, show kindness, show mercy, show compassion. Don't be harsh. Love covers a multitude of sin. Love covers a multitude of sin. Love covers a multitude of sin. When they come back, instead of fighting them and push them away and get them scared, open your arms and receive them. Receive them. Receive them. Show them kindness. Don't repeat to them what they did wrong. They are already guilty. They know they are guilty. They know they hurt you. They are already crying in the inside. And they are looking for mercy. Don't be like I told you so. You see now you are back. And you are back here. Eh? No, 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 no. You are going to push them away. Use wisdom. Wisdom is key to restoration. Wisdom is the key thing. In restoration. Please help me share this. Share this on your timeline and in some groups. Wisdom is the key to restoration. And you must forgive. You must have enough love. Enough love in your heart. To let them know I am here for you. I am here for you. Don't chase them away. Don't get them scared. Because you know why? They are already scared. It takes grace from God to come back. Humble come back. It takes grace to put humbleness in somebody's heart. To come back crawling back to you. It takes a lot of courage for a prodigal son to come back home and face you. It takes a lot of courage. For a prodigal son, whether it is a husband, a wife, a child, a colleague, a church member, a sister, or brother. They have prayed and pondered because they don't know. They don't know if you will reject them. They are afraid of rejection. They are afraid of rejection. 
So when they come back, apply love. Don't apply rejection. Love goes a long way. Love will go a long way. Love can travel miles that rejection will never be able to do. When they come back to you, when they come back to your home, when they come back to your church, open your hands. Open your hands like God will do and receive them. Don't remind your ex of the woman he left you for. Give it time. Welcome him first. Show love and you can talk later. You can talk later. You can discuss your emotions later. Women, don't be over emotional when your partner comes back. You will chase him away. Your emotions will scare him away. Be patient. Pray. Pray. A wise woman builds her house. A stupid woman destroys it with her own hands. Don't be that stupid woman. Don't be the stupid woman. When God finally brings that person back to you, catch them. The Bible says he pulls us, God pulls us with the rope of love and kindness. Kindness and love is a cord. Let me tell you a spiritual principle. Kindness and love is a cord that binds people to you. Are you hearing me? Kindness and love is a cord that binds people to you. Because even God pulls us to him, not by aggression, not by condemnation, not by hitting us, but by his love. God pulls us to him. If you want to capture a person, your love and your kindness will do the work. Prayer is one thing, but if you are praying and you are rude, you are aggressive, you are complaining, you are emotional, you are a drama queen, you will lose them. You will lose them. Use wisdom. Be tender. Be gentle. God is sending them back to you. Paul says, they went away. As slaves but they are no longer a slave he said for a little while they left you for a little while they left you so that they could come back and you will have them back forever the restoration God is bringing for your relationship this time is forever this time is for good like we, almost, we always say, if it is yours, let it go. If it is yours, it will come back. And if it comes back to you, you know it is really yours. If it comes back to you, you will know it is really yours. If people want to leave you, let them go. If it comes back, you will have them for good. They will come back humble. Humble. God will fix them. God will fix them. Let me give you another scripture. In the, in the book of, of Acts chapter 15 from verse 36 to 39. Let me show you what happened. The book of Acts 15, 36 and 39. Let me show you another problem and the power of God's restoration. I am telling you, this is a prophetic word for you. If you hold this word and meditate and pray, you will see changes. God does not do anything without first telling his, his prophet, the prophet, his servant. Let me show you the book of Acts. From chapter 15, from verse 36. Acts 15, 
from verse 36. It says, after some time, Paul and Barnabas, let's go. After some time, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit each city where we previously preached the word of the Lord to see how the new believers are doing. Barnabas agreed and wanted to take along John Mark, but Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark had deserted them in, in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work. Their disagreement was so sharp that they separated. Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed for Cyrus. Paul chose um, Silas. And as he left, the believers entrusted, to the, entrusted him to the Lord's grace, gracious care. You hear me? If you know the Bible story, John Mark was a young disciple. So when Paul, the Apostle Paul, and Barnabas were about to go into mission, they took along them John Mark. But when John Mark got with them to the journey, he decided to go back to Jerusalem. He deserted them in the middle of the mission and he went back. So time has passed and John Mark came in the place where Paul and Barnabas were and they were about to take a new mission. And then Barnabas said to Paul, let's take John Mark with us. This is the John Mark who has deserted them. And Paul said, no, I don't think it is wise. I don't think it's correct. And I don't think it's wisdom to carry John Mark with us. This, this confusion, this disagreement brought so much problem and brought separation between Barnabas and Paul. So John Mark and Barnabas, they went away. And that was the end. You didn't hear about John Mark. And you didn't hear about um, um, and Barnabas anymore. There was a separation because Paul went his own way. And John Mark and, and Barnabas went their own way. You will think that is over, right? No, it is not over. Go with me to the book of Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 9 and 6. Let me read 1 Corinthians 9 and 6 to you. 1 Corinthians 9 and 6. So 1 Corinthians 9 and 6, it says this. Oh, it is only, the, this is Paul speaking. Paul said, oh, it is only Barnabas and I who have to work to support ourselves. So you see that after there was a great separation between Paul and Barnabas, Corinthians is telling us that Paul and Barnabas, somewhere along the way, they reconnected. Are you hearing me? They, they reconnected themselves. They, they joined back together. They worked again. They were again colleagues. That is relationship. Restoration. Sometimes along the way, things will happen. Things will happen, you can quarry with your fellow minister, with your friend, with your husband. But then along the way, our God is a God of restoration. Along the way, somewhere, the person that you had problem with misunderstanding, imagine Paul and Barnabas who were together for so long. Because of this disobedient, confused John Mark, leadership separated. Two major people who have been working together, they're separated. Sometimes your separation is not because you and the person cannot work together or because you people were not supposed to be. A, a, a person can come between and cause confusion. Amen? Somebody, the enemy can use anybody to destroy divine relationships. Divine relationships can be destroyed by all kinds of reason. Simple argument because of John Mark. This rebellious boy who just went away. He came back in the scene and because of him there was problem. But God knows how to restore that which the enemy came in and destroyed. Some of you, you separated from your partner, from your friend, from your church for a simple reason. 
Something that you would have resolved and be matured and talk about it and restore the relationship. But no, you allow it and you just went away and John Mark went and, and Barnabas chose John Mark forgetting about Paul and Paul just took Silas and there was a separation. But in Corinthians now we are getting to know that John and um, Barnabas and Paul connected again and worked together. Are you hearing me? And then let's go to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. 2 Timothy. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 4, verse 11. Okay. See, now is Paul again speaking. Paul is saying to Timothy, only Luke is with me. Bring Mark. Somebody need to hear. Bring Mark with you when you come. This has to bless somebody. Only Luke is with me. Paul is telling Timothy. Where am I? Okay, verse 11. He said, only in verse 14. Verse, let me see what I want to say. He said, only Luke is with me. Bring Mark with you when you come. For he will be helpful to me in my ministry. This is the same Paul who wanted nothing to do with Mark. He and Barnabas separated because of Mark. But now time has passed. The same John Mark. That Paul didn't want anything to do with. In such a way that brought separation between him and Barnabas. Now fast forwarding in the ministry of Paul. Paul is telling Timothy. Go and bring when you are coming. Bring Mark with you. He will be useful to me in my ministry. How can somebody. Who was. Not useful before. Bless you, Sister Vilma. How can somebody that um, Paul rejected before even had such a quarry with Barnabas? Is somebody hearing me? Now telling his disciple, his another disciple, Timothy, to bring the same John Mark to him. That John Mark will be profitable to him now in his ministry. So what happened along the way? What happened along the way is that this John Mark who was immature and did these actions of immaturity and was not profitable to Paul at one point has learned his lesson. Somebody hashtag the young will grow. The young will grow. Somebody may not be profitable to you in one part of your life, in one time of your life, but then time goes. Uh, hallelujah time passes over it while you are busy doing your own things you are praising god you are worshiping god you are doing other things god is preparing them for your future some people need to live your life now so that they can go away and come back a better person sometimes for them to become better and discover who they are in God and discover their value, their identity and discover you, your value and the quality in you. God has to take them away. Some people will not value you until you are away in their life. Some people will never grow and learn until they miss the opportunity of being around your presence, around you being a gift to them. So men will never appreciate you until God take you away from them. And when they are away, God begins to work with them. God begins to work in them. God begins to open their eyes to see the value of you. God begins to make them to miss you. They begin to miss your presence. They begin to miss your prayer. They begin to miss your fasting. They begin to miss the privileges that comes with you. And because they want it back, the wise ones will work on themselves. They will begin to cry out to God. Father, fix me. Some people are away. 
You think they are just enjoying their life. But I'm telling you, they are going through a process with God. They are, everybody is in a process. If they are a child of God, trust me, you may not be seeing the changes in them. You may not be seeing the development, but God is working on them. And why God is working on them? God is working on you. God is working on you. And when, 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 when the time came, we saw how Paul, who has the eyes, and, and let me tell you something. Sometimes the best way to discipline people is to let them go. I call it tough love. When people want to leave you, let them go. They will not learn until they are cut off from you. When people want to leave you, let them go. Some people will never grow until you let them go. Some people will never grow until you let them go. They will never learn their lesson. They will never learn that the outside world is very hard because you keep protecting them. You keep loving on them. You keep giving them everything. They will never learn. For some people to learn, you have to cut them loose. You have to abandon them. That was discipline. Paul was a man of God. He was a spiritual father. He did not move by their um, emotion. Don't move by emotion. Don't move and make decision by emotion. Use wisdom and the spirit of God. Paul was harsh, but it was tough love. Sometimes for people to change, for people to learn, for people to be transformed, for people to grow, you have to give them tough love. Tough love. Don't always answer their phone call. They take you for granted. They take you for granted. They take your love for granted. They take your kindness for granted. They will not learn. They will remain babies forever. Because they don't understand that it's a privilege to connect with you. And sometimes the problem is from you. Sometimes you are the one who took them for granted. So God has to take them away from you to train you to be humble, to train you to be appreciative. Sometimes you are the problem. Yes, sometimes we are the problem. So for God to grow us, for God to humble us, he will take away our partners. It could be a church member. It could be your mother, your father, somebody you are close to. God will take them away. Sometimes the way we talk to people is very bad. We talk to people so bad. No appreciation. No honor. No respect. And God said, oh, I give you a treasure. And this is how you are handling the treasure. So what God will do. He will take the person away. And then you will feel the pain of loneliness. You will feel the pain of being single or not having that person. And then when the person comes back, you will learn to appreciate them. Sometimes God takes people away from our life to teach us respect for people and appreciation for the gifts of God. So it is not always the other person. And by the time the other person comes back, you have become a better man. You have become a better woman. Because in the time of separation, God was working with you. Oh, God was working with you. God has been working with you. God has been developing you. God has been showing you areas in your life that you have to work on before the person comes back. Before God restore your relationship, God will deal with you, your own heart, your own issues. Your own issues. 
Because we all have them. And when those people come back in your life, you will be more profitable to them. And they will be more profitable to you. So it's a gain-gain situation. It is a win-win situation. And then you can apply Romans 8, 28. All things work together. For the good of them that love the Lord. And are called according to his purpose. The separation was working for your good. Because you are the call of the Lord. Some of you went back to school and educated yourself because you were left alone. So the being alone gave you the opportunity to educate yourself. If God has not taken that person away from you, you would have seen being the same jacked up person, crying and complaining, cursing and all of those things. But God humbled you. Sometimes we were too proud because we had a partner, we had everything, we had somebody, we had divine connections, we became too proud. So for God to give us a spirit of humbleness, God snatched our idols away. God snatched our support system away so that we can put our eyes, we can learn to put our eyes on God. God trained you. Train you in your time of being alone. God taught you how to depend on God and God alone. God taught you how to pray for yourself. God taught you how to put on your own light. Yes, the separation was good for you. Because you may not see it, but I come to tell you, you are a better person than you were before. Because of the things you have suffered. Jesus said that because of the things he suffered. You understand me? He humbled. The things he suffered caused him to humble himself. Sometimes we will not know humbleness until we suffer some things. Because some women especially, they think it's all about their beauty. But they forget that beauty, outside beauty, without a good character and good attitude, is just a car about to crash. If you are beauty on the outside, but you are ugly on the inside, you are still ugly all around. So what does God want to do? God wants to fix us from the inside so that we are beautiful on the inside and we glow on the outside. Our light will shine. For all to see our light and glorify our Father in heaven. Beauty on the outside minus beauty in the inside is a rotting cake all around. So God wants to beautify us and make us profitable. Somebody hashtag I am profitable. When that person comes back, even us. Some of the church members who left your church, men and women of God, is because of your own attitude. You were too harsh, or I was too harsh, or we did some things. So God is teaching us. God is shaping us. God is taking away the rough edges. God is training us how to talk, how to respond, how to love. So now when the people come back, we are well able to take care of them. So now I am profitable to those who will come back. When they come back, they will see a new person. A new person. Paul said he is coming back. Take him back. Because now he will, he will be profitable to you. He left as a slave. So men left as jacks. But they are coming back as king. I just said something. Some men, they left as jacks, but they are coming back as king. That man who left you, he left you like a nobody, but he's coming back as a king. That woman who left, she left like a crazy woman, but she's coming back as a queen. Your child left you 
very rude, arrogant. But your son is coming back as a true child of God. Because in their absence, God was with them. Your prayers was reaching them. Your prayers was causing the hand of God to be upon them. Your prayers was causing God to transform them. Your prayers was causing God to deliver them. I want to believe that when John Mark was away, Paul was praying for him. Paul was praying for him. That's why he was able to take them back. Because he had an expectation. Expectation for something good coming out of John Mark. He kept track of them. Because how come he was still connected to them? How come he was still around them? He left them. But he was still in with them. In the spirit by his prayers. He was still praying for John Mark. That's what I believe. Paul had an expectation. Because he saw the mistake of John Mark. But he could see in the future. That if somebody stands in the gap. For this young man. He will be a better person in the future. He will be profitable for my ministry in the future. So I believe by the reason of revelation. The things that Paul saw in the spirit for John Mark. He kept praying for John Mark for the restoration. So when the time came, Paul sent Timothy. Sam, I, I am alone with Luke. But bring with you. Come to me. But don't come alone. But come with Mark. Bring Mark with you. Somebody hashtag restoration. Restoration. Bring Mark with you. Huh? He said because he will be helpful. For my ministry. John Mark. Ha! John Mark. And Barnabas. Were separated. From Paul. But along the way. The God of relationship restoration. Restored this divine connection. And see what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, bring John Mark to me. Bring Mark to me. Because he will be profitable to my ministry. So God had to bring connection back in that restoration. In that relationship. Why? Because there was a purpose to be fulfilled. Some of you. The reason why God is restoring your relationship is because the person who left, they have within them the capacity to join with you and do greater things for God. So no matter how much Satan is fighting, God is fighting to bring you back together. Because there is a purpose that needs to be fulfilled. There is a mission for you and that woman. There is a, a divine connection that when you connect together, you will do greater things for God. When that man comes back to your life, two of you will do better. When that woman comes back to your life, two of you will do better. When your child comes back, you will do better. There is a purpose for your connection. So God is fighting to reconnect you. Somebody decree restoration. Paul is telling us a lot. He said he will be useful for my ministry. Purpose. Oh my God. Purpose will force restoration. Purpose is going to force restoration. Any connection we had, any connection that belongs to us, that will help us to fulfill the purpose of God in our life, and the enemy came and destroyed it, we decree and declare today, we pray today, by the power of God, by the hand of God, let there be restoration. Let God restore. Bring them back for your glory, God. May God bring them back. May God turn it around. 
Restoration. 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 Please help me share this. If you have not shared this on your timeline or on the groups, please, can you just help me share? When you press the share button, it's just a one second thing. You will help me to encourage other people. You will help me to preach this gospel to many more people. I cannot do this alone, but with your help, I can reach more people. Amen. So help me just share this on your timeline, on the groups that you are in, in on Facebook. Post it on, in the groups and bless somebody. As God is blessing you, be a blessing to somebody by sharing this message, this broadcast right now. Just help me do that to help somebody. Because a lot of people are giving up on their divine relationships. When God is a God of restoration. God is a God of turn around. And when the people come back, the Bible says that the, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former house. Oh God. Somebody need to decree that. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former house. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former house. Somebody say, I receive it. Glory is coming your way. Greater things are coming your way. Better things. Oh, ba, 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 ba. They are coming your way. I decree it. I proclaim it. Restoration upon our relationships, our godly relationships. Let it be so in Jesus' mighty name. And what I see in the spirit is that it's going to be sweet. It's going to be sweet. It will be like honey upon your tongue. You will thank God for this restoration. You will say, wow, I never knew God can restore something and make it this sweet. You will say, wow, this is the doing of the Lord and it is marvelous in our sight. This is the doing of the Lord and it is marvelous. Your marriage, some of you online, you are going to be remarrying soon. You better hear the word of the Lord. Somebody online, you are going to be remarrying soon. The person who left you is going to come back. In Jesus' name. Restoration. The pastor who left you. Some of you, God connected you to a great man of God, great woman of God, as your covering. Satan came in and brought confusion. But I see connections coming back. Let me tell you something. One of the dreams I had, what was um, last night, I had a dream. In this, in this dream, I saw Juanita Bino. I saw her because you know I used to watch Juanita Bino a lot. I used to follow her. She inspires me. I used to just listen to all her messages. I used to follow her prayer, everything. And because of transition in my life, I a kind of just left it alone. I'm busy following other people. But last night, I saw myself hugging Juanita Bynum so tight. And she was crying. And I was crying. And I was, she was saying to me, what happened, Claire? Why did you go away from me? And I was saying, Mama, I need you back. You, God is using these pictures to tell me that. Some old connections that were, were, were vital in my life. That the enemy came and destroyed. He's going to restore it from both sides. 
So it may not be about Juanita Bynum, but God is using this as a picture to tell me that restoration is coming from great and divine places. Juanita Bynum hugged me in that dream this night and she was weeping and I was weeping and she was saying, Claire, I'm sorry. I'm also saying to him, to her mama, I'm sorry. And I said to her, I need you to come to Holland. I need you to come and preach. And I said to her, after all you've taught me all these years, Mama Juanita Bynum, are you going to just go without seeing the fruits of your labor? Come and see what I am doing. And she said, yes, I'm coming to Holland. Are you hearing me? It may not be about Juanita Bynum. It may be about any other person, but I know God is telling me that I am restoring your key relationships that the enemy came and destroyed. Two days ago, I had another dream. And in that dream, I saw a man of God that we did some things in the past. And we were holding our hands and we are saying, we are going to do it again. That is restoration. God is showing me pictures of restoration. Divine relationships are being restored. Divine relationships. In the body of Christ, key relationships, not any kind of relationships. I'm talking about divine relationships that will change the world, will change your life, will change destinies. God is bringing them back together. God is bringing those divine relationships back together. And the beauty is both parties. It's like God has prepared the hearts of the people. It's like God had prepared in my dream the heart of Juanita Bynum. So even if the person is greater than you, God has prepared your heart to receive you back. Are you hearing me? God has prepared your heart to be humble to them. Because in the dream, I was crying. Juanita Bino was crying. And we hugged each other so tight. And I was crying. And I was saying, yes, we have to do things again. We have to reconnect. And she too said, yes, let's do it. Please, let's do it. Let's connect back. Both parties were yielding to the spirit of God's restoration. Both parties we're in agreement for the restoration. And that's what God is doing in the body of Christ. And even the other dream I had a few days ago with the apostle of God. A man of God that I was reconnecting back with. I saw we were both so happy and laughing. So much joy. And we were saying to each other, wow, it is so great to work together again. And I said, yes. And he said, yes. So God is restoring on all levels. God is bringing people back to you. God is bringing husband back home. God is bringing wives back home. God is bringing children back home. God is bringing members, church members who left. He's bringing them back home. The key ones who belong to you. And Satan came and confused them and pulled them away from you. They're coming back home. They're coming back home. Somebody hashtag, they are coming back home. They're coming back home. Your lost goods are coming back home. They are coming. And this time around, there's going to be so much mutual respect. So much honor from both sides. So much joy. And love, hearts are going to be tender. Hearts are going to be tender. They are coming back home. Yes, Sister Fatima. They are coming back home. God himself is building back the breaches. Breaches that were born by argument, by confusion. Some of you, God is restoring your love. God is restoring your love. Some of you are married, but the love died. 
The love died before you were even married. You married in distress and you've been there in distress. But God is able to make something new burn in that place where the enemy brought destruction. In that place where the enemy came and burned the bridge, God is bringing restoration. God is bringing love in the place where there is no love. God is bringing it. The love that you have never felt before. God said, I'm giving you a taste of that love in this season. This season of restoration. This season of new beginning. God is going to give you love. The love you've never had. The love of a father. The love that you desire. The love of a mother. The love of a husband. The love of a wife. The love that you desire from your own child and you didn't get. God said, I'm giving you love. Sorry, I have to put Vaseline on my lips and dry. Amen. Because of the cold. God is bringing love. God is bringing love. Love in dry places. Love. When I spoke like that, I just felt the spirit of God just enter the room. Love in dry places. The places that have been without love. God is bringing love in that place. Love in dry places. God is bringing love. In the place where the enemy came and snatched away love. God is bringing love. May God fill you with his love. Some of you, the spirit of rejection is so heavy on you. The spirit of rejection is so heavy on you. Because of the person who left you. And you have been wearing that garment for so long. But God is clothing you with strength. God is clothing you with love. God is crowning you with his love. I feel a love encounter right here. God is crowning you with his love. Just receive the love of God. God is restoring you. Piece by piece. God is restoring. Come on, receive it. Receive it. God is washing you. Restoration. God is restoring you. He's restoring peace. Joy. Taking away the pain. Pain is living. God is giving you love. 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 Thank you for clicking those love. Thank you for clicking those love. God is restoring you. God is fixing you. Love of God. Let the love you are clicking be a sign. That we are releasing for everyone watching. We decree love. Love. We release the spirit of love upon the broken hearts. Shut up aside. Yes, Lord. We release love for the broken hearted. Receive healing. Receive healing. I decree a love reviver upon your life, your marriage, your relationships. Your 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Love reviver. Love reviver. Love reviver. Upon relationships. Restorations. Come on, release. Release the love. Release the love. Release the love. Jesus. 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 Come on, pray. Restoration. 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 Believe God. Believe God. Believe God. Rejection is being destroyed. Rejection. Broken. Spirit of rejection. We reject it. We break it. In the name of Jesus. Sakabaya. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Love reviver. Love reviver. Shata ba 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 ba. Oka Santa ra ba ba ba. We release love. Spirit of love. Spirit of love. God bless you, Michelle. Shaka ba 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 Jesus. The glory is coming. The glory is coming. The glory. Jesus. restoration healing and restoration healing and restoration healing your soul is being healed forget the former things forget the past God is doing something new Something new. Clean. New, 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 new. New beginning. New beginning. New beginning. New beginning. Forget the former things. God. Is doing something new. Forget the former things. Forget. New beginning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. New beginning. Doing something new. Hashtag new beginning. New beginning. Just write down new beginning and claim it. Claim it in Jesus' name. New beginning. We proclaim it. We decree it. We release it. Holy Ghost fire. New beginning. 
We step into the new. We walk in the new. Forget former things. New beginning. New beginning. Your soul is being restored. Your soul being healed. Healed right now. Healing. Healing. Healing of souls. Hearts being healed. Heal. Heal. Heal it, Father. I send my word. Heal your disease. Healing. New, 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 new. Come on. Receive it. Heal your soul. Your soul. Your soul. Your soul. It's being healed. In the name of Jesus. Healing. Healing of your soul. Healing. We proclaim healing of souls. Souls are being healed. Hearts are being healed. Restoration. God is healing. Restoring divine relationships. Father, we align with your word. With your word. We say, yes, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Restore relationships. For your glory. For your glory. For your glory. Restore relationships. For your glory. For your glory. For your glory. Let there be worldwide in your children. Restore relationships. Restore. 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 Alignments. Restore. Restore. Restore God. Restore right now. Visit. Visit them. Visit them. Bring them back home. Bring them back home. Bring them back to their senses. To their senses. Restore, oh God. Restore. Restore. And let the glory, the glory of the latter house come right now. Come right now. The glory, the glory, the glory of the latter house. Praise Jesus. Wash in your blood. Wash us in your blood. In your blood. Jesus. 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 Wash us. Mola bakaye ndoboye. Mola baye ndele bosaya. Mola bashakate. Jesus. Purify us. Sanctify us. Sanctify. Please help me share this. Help me share. Share this with your friends. Restoration. 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 I feel an anointing of healing. 
and divine restoration. Some of you have cried for too long. But I decree your morning days are over. You have wept for too long. But God is remembering you. And restoring you. You have cried. For too long. There's nothing, nothing to hurt for God. Just believe. Believe and pray. Believe. God is circumcising your heart to receive. When the man calls, don't hang the phone. When the woman calls, don't hang the phone. When the child calls, don't hang the phone. When the church member calls, don't hang the phone. When your friend calls, don't hang the phone. Pick up the phone. Solve the problem. Get the restoration. Get the restoration. God is restoring. They will call you. They will call you soon. Get the restoration. Get the restoration. Don't hand the phone. Restoration. Pick up the phone. Make the appointment to talk. Make the appointment to talk. Talk. Restore. God is restoring. God said, I hear your cry. I heard you. I heard you. And now I'm restoring. Restoring you. Restoring your peace. God is restoring. God is restoring. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to pick the phone call. It is God. It is God. He makes all things new, new, new. He makes all things new. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You will receive phone calls. Don't turn away. Don't turn away from the phone calls. Hear the word of the Lord. Don't reject them. They may come back looking like a wretch in their appearance. But there is diamond in them. There is treasure in them. Because God has taught them some things that will be profitable to you. When they come back, don't turn away. You will miss your blessing. Don't let the pain control you. Shalom. 
Don't let the pain control you. Don't let the emotions control you. But remember this word. Remember this word. God is preparing you. Before God does anything, he will send his word. He will send his word to prepare you. His word will always go before him. You are not hearing this word by coincidence. God is preparing your heart. God is preparing your spirit. God is preparing your mind to receive your blessing. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. It's going to be profitable to you. The blessings, the glory of the new thing is going to be better. Than the former thing. Some of you. Your partner left you. Using drugs. But they are coming back clean. Your partner left you. Using drugs. But they are coming back clean. With their sound mind. Your partner left you. Smoking cigarettes. And drinking too much alcohol. But they're coming back to you clean. They're coming back to you whole. God is fixing them. God is fixing them. God is fixing them. There's a woman online you are watching me. Your husband left you. Or your partner in serious relationship left you. They were on drugs. Very abusive. And you couldn't handle it. And the relationship got spoiled. But in their time of being away, God is fixing them. They will come back to you. And you must take them and pray with them. God has fixed them. God has delivered them. It may take a little bit more process while they are with you. But don't give up. It is the doing of the Lord. Don't give up. Work with them. Stand with them. Pray with them. Labor with them. And you will receive the treasure. You will receive the treasure. I am talking to a woman online. Your partner left you using drugs, alcohol. He was very abusive. And he went with another woman. And you have been very, very sad. But God has worked with him. And he's coming back home. He's coming back home. You must not reject them. Use discernment. Discern before you say no. Discern before you say no. God of restoration. He is doing it by His Spirit. By His Spirit. He's breathing restoration upon your relationship right now. Wherever you are, don't just watch me, but pray as I speak. Pray. Decree whatever God put upon your heart. Decree it and believe it. Decree it. God does not lie. 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 
God does not lie. My heart is bleeding for you. God is touching my heart for you. That's because God is crying for you. Restoration. You have suffered for too long. You suffered shame. You suffered pain. But God said, I see you. God said, I see you. I will reward you. I will give you double for your trouble. Double for your trouble. You were shamed and disgraced and confused. You felt so much disappointment. But God said, I see you. I see you. I see you, my daughter. I see you, my son. I will reward you. I will give you double for your trouble. Double for your trouble. Double for your trouble. God is restoring you. Nothing too dirty that he cannot make worthy. No matter how bad it was. God is fixing it. God is a fixer. God is a fixer. God is a fixer. He's fixing it. He's fixing you. I thank you all so much for watching me. I've been praying so much the last past weeks. I've been in serious intercession. And I, I, I did not take care of myself. I was in the cold without a jacket and I've drinking cold water, cold juice. It affected my vocal cords. Amen. So I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to take care of myself. But I had this word burning in my spirit. So I couldn't leave it. I don't let nothing to, 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 to hinder when God gives me a message. I've been praying, praying for you, the body of Christ and myself. And I left myself in the cold, not taking care of myself. But God said to me, go and speak to the people. And I said, yes, Lord. Whether my voice is hoarse or not. Thank you so much. I received the blessings. I still want to encourage you because my heart is heavy and I don't want you to miss your blessing. That's why even with my voice being so hoarse, I still say, God, I will speak your word. Let your word come from my spirit. Let your word come from your spirit and let your people be set free. Let your people be strengthened. Father God, let your people be strengthened. Let the broken hearted be made healed, be mended. I cry out for your relationships and for my relationships. And I say, God, heal us when the, where the enemy came and hurt us. Heal us, heal your body, heal the people, bring restoration. Connect the husbands and the wives again. Connect the children back to their mother and to their fathers. Connect. Connect those divine connections and relationships for your kingdom purpose, for your glory. God, connect. Let God reconnect. Let God bring restoration. I pray for you online. May you be healed. May you take this word and charge you and cause you to pray. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on anything. Don't give up. Oh, hear my voice today by the Spirit of God. Don't throw in the towel. Don't buy the lies of the enemy. Don't give up. God is a restorer. Don't give up. Pray. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. I charge you to pray. 
I charge you to pray. God bless you, Pastor Elizabeth. I charge you, child of God, woman of God, daughter of God, son of God. I charge you to pray. Pray. God is on your case. I come like an angel. When Daniel was praying and fasting, he was about to give up because he was about to give up hope. But God sent an angel to tell Daniel, God has heard your prayer and there is a warfare in heavens because of you. Your, your request is on the way, but you must continue to pray so that your personal angel will prevail. So that your personal angel will prevail. God is on your case. God is on your case. Don't give up. This is not the time to give up. But it's the time to engage God in prayer. God doesn't lie. No, my sister, he doesn't lie. He has never lied to me. He is not a man to lie or a son of man to repent. He will not lie to us. Our God will never lie to us. He will not lie to us. God bless you, Sister Betty. God bless you, Sister Fatima. God bless you, Sister Gifty. I cannot see all the names. God bless you, Prophetess um, Sally. God bless you, all the people that I can't see them. Thank you for spending this time with me. Um, please, um, I'm done with this message for today, and I pray that God blesses you with it. If you did not watch the message from beginning, I encourage you to go back from the beginning and watch it. Amen. And I encourage you, if you have not shared this message, I encourage you to go back and begin to share it to people. Amen. Share it with people. Share it in groups. There is somebody out there who is giving up on relationship. And the enemy is laughing at them, lying to them, telling them that it's over. But we know it is not over. God is just starting a new thing. God is doing a new thing. Oh yeah, thank you Holy Spirit. One last point. When that relationship come back, see it as new. Don't put the old wine skin into the new wine or the new wine into the old wine skin. Pretend the past didn't happen and let God do a new thing. Pretend the past didn't happen and see it as if the person just contacted you. Thank you, Mark. Pretend like the person just contacted you for the first time. Because the word of God is, I am doing a new thing. It's a new relationship. Put it in a new package. Put it in a new, in a new format, in a new mindset, in a new glory. God said, I am doing a new thing. New means new in all areas. Thank you, Brother Daniel. Thank you so much for sharing this as well. So it is a new thing. The marriage that didn't work before, when you come back together with that partner, see it as, see it as a new thing. Don't go and try to be doing the old things in the new thing. If the person used to eat bread before, maybe they don't, they don't eat bread anymore. You have to rediscover them. Amen? You have to allow God to show you the new person. Yes, prophetess, new wineskin. The person may not like you to scratch their face like they liked it before. So you must rediscover them and allow them to rediscover you. And ask God to show you how to deal with a new relationship. Whether it is a child, a friend, a husband, a wife, a, a, a fiancé, somebody you were dating. Whether it's a church member. Allow God to show you how to deal with the new. How to deal with the new. You can't just be talking to people you have not seen for a year. The same way you spoke with them one year ago. Because within one year people change. People transform. People become new people. So you cannot just go with the familiar anymore. 
The familiar will not work in this season, my darling. The familiar will not work. Take your time to rediscover. Take your time to rediscover them and let them rediscover you. Thank you so much. Bless you all. Please, um, I have my page. This is my page, Claire Revealed Ministries. Claire Revealed Ministries. If you have not liked my page, I strongly encourage you to go and like my page after this broadcast. Amen. Please like my page. And when you go to my page, when you like my page, you will see a link that says community. You click on community. You will see shop. You will see different things. And then you will see community. You click on community and community will give you a button of invite friends. You click on the invite friends button and you invite all your friends to like my page. Because I want to be using my page to come to you from now on. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Those of you who feel like sowing a financial seed into my ministry, I'm going to put a link at the end of this broadcast. You can use the link to go PayPal me. Amen? You can PayPal me and you can send the money through my bank account. It will help me to continue in my ministry. God bless you. Have a good night, everybody. Love you all and thanks for sharing and thanks for being with me. I will come back to you again very soon as the Lord leads. And please pray for me. Pray for my vocal cords. Pray that the call also leaves me. Amen. Because the work ahead of 